Greetings, my little yarnivores. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. So today I'm going to show you how to make what I call a dragon wing shawl. Um, the original pattern that I had found, it's in German, so I had to do a bit of finagling. Um, uh, I do not sprechen, uh, uh, so, uh, you know, had to look at the diagram and go from there. Um, so, uh, for the one that I showed in the intro, I, of course, used Karen Cakes. Yes, I love the brand. And no, I'm not sponsored, but I do love the colorways. Um, and this one I found recently, they put out a new line, um, of colorways. And this one is Blueberry Kiwi. And for this tutorial, I'm going to use my old trusted go-to of the Karen Cakes Red Velvet. I'm quite sure it's Red Velvet. Yes, Red Velvet, okay. And a size I crochet hook, um, I find works out well. And for the size that I finished up with, I only needed one skein, which is great. Um, however, you can make this project bigger. If you so choose, you will of course need some more yarn. Um, the pattern is very forgiving as far as if you need to make it bigger, uh, or smaller for that matter. Um, I have a, a slender frame, so I only needed one. Alrighty. So, let's get started, shall we? Okay. Alrighty. Let's get started. So, you really don't need a tremendous tail, but I always like to leave a good 6 to 12 inches just because. <laughs> so, you start with a slip knot like so. And we're going to chain up four. One, two, three, and four. Now we are going to proceed by doing four double crochets into that first chain stitch. So that's one, two, three, and four. Easy enough, right? Okay, so that actually makes a total of five double crochets for our first row. Then we shall proceed by chaining up three. One, two, three, turning our work. And we will do a double crochet into not this first one, but into the second double crochet. Okay. You see? Okay. Then, so we have two double crochets. Then we do a chain one. Okay. And into the next double crochet into the third one, we do two double crochets into that stitch. Okay, then into the next double crochet, we do two double crochets. So we're already starting in on an increase. Okay, and then into the last double crochet, we do a double crochet, that chain three. So, I know it's always a little bit tricky, but we can do it. We can persevere. If we put our mind to it, we can do anything. All right. You know, always be sure to get through both of those little loops there. Okay, and that is the end of row two. All righty. So for row three, one, two, three chains, turn our work. All right, so now this is where the pattern really starts to uh, show its repeat, so to speak, okay? So for row three, so we did our chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. So into not this one, but into the next one, we do uh, two double crochets, 
Alrighty, so that's two double crochets, and then one double crochet into the next stitch, and then two double crochets. So it's a single double crochet, two double crochets, single double crochet, and then two double crochets. So it's one, two, one, two. Alrighty. One, two, one, two. Hope that makes sense. All right. And then into the next double crochet, we just do one double crochet. And here we're approaching that chain one space. So we do our one double crochet. And then we do another chain one. And then we're going to do a double crochet into the next two double crochets. So we've got one, and then again into the top of the chain three. Now it can be a little bit tricky, so I do suggest, as I always do, um, that when you're chaining up three, to make it just a smidgen loose so that it's easier to get into those stitches because we're going to need to uh, throughout the duration of this project. All right, so that is the end of row, uh, row three. All righty. All right, so for row four, again, we chain up three. One, two, three, somewhat loose. And so not into this first one, but into the second double crochet, we do a double crochet. Yes, indeedy. And then we're going to, again, chain one. See, we're going to be having these chain one spaces along one side of it. So we did our chain one. And then we do three regular double crochets. One. Two. And three. Okay, and then we do what we did down here where it's, you know, see that we've got the one, two, one, two. We're going to be doing that, but we're going to be doing it in reverse. I know that sounds a little wonky, you know, but again, we shall persevere. So it's doing two double crochets into the next stitch, then one, And then two double crochets, and then ending on one. And we're going to be doing this throughout the rest of the project. And so in the last one, see I just did, pardon me, so I did two double crochets, one double crochet, two double crochets, and then you end with one double crochet. And I didn't make this one very loose, so I'm going to have to make do. But that's okay. I do it for you guys. All right. And shaboom. There we are. Okay. So that is the end of row four. And I need some more yarn here. Pardon me. All right. So for row five. We chain up three. Yes, indeedy. One, two, three. Turn our work. And we're going to be doing that increase again. And that's going to create an arched edge. Okay. And this edge over here is where we're going to have our uh, sort of lacy scales. You'll see. Okay. So we chained up three. And then into the, not the first, but the second, we do two double crochets. Yes, yes, yes. So we did two double crochets, then you do one double crochet. And then two double crochets into the next. 
Okay, see, we've got one, two, one, two. All right, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, then we work our way across doing five more regular double crochets. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. Then we do our chain one for the space, and then we do two regular double crochets. See, I made this last chain a bit looser, so it is a bit easier to get into. It's a little helpful hint from the fiber spider. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of row five. Now, row six um, is going to be the end of this tail segment. So we chain up three, one, two, and three. And we're going to work our way back. And of course, uh, knots. Gotta love them. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do this off camera. Excuse me a moment. Ah, the magic of editing. The magic of editing. Haha. <laughs> okay, so we <laughs> chained up three. Now this is uh, row six. So uh, we are not going to be doing a chain space here. We're just going to go straight across. So not into here, but into the next one. We do a double crochet. And then into this chain space, we do another double crochet. Okay, nice and easy. You could actually do a double crochet into that chain, but you know what? It's just easier this way, and it looks just the same to me. All right, so then we are going to do double crochets all the way across. until we reach almost the end of this row. Um, until we have four double crochets remaining. So we've got one, two, three, four. All right, so I need to do two more. All righty. So in the last four double crochets, chain counting counting as one. So we're going to again do our increase of two double crochets. One, two, then one double crochet, and then two double crochets, and then end with one double crochet. Yes, I'm quite sure that I can get my stitch. There we are. See? Perseverance. All right. So now this is the end of the first of the segments. Now, each consequent segment, you know, again, I mean, this is the, the arched side here and it's going to come up this way and then stop short and I will explain the repeat but each segment is only six six rows so you can do however many segments you want in order to achieve the length that you want it's totally up to you alrighty so we're gonna go on to row seven all right, so for row seven, again, we start with our chaining up of three, turn the work. All righty, and so we're gonna be doing our increasing. So like always, now this is for the entire pattern, really. Uh, it's not into here, but it is into here. I just wanna make sure that that's abundantly clear. So we do our two double crochets, then one double crochet, 
and then two double crochets. So it's one, two, one, two. And then we're going to work our way across. Okay. Now, the trick is knowing where to stop. Okay. Now, I will try to make it as perfectly clear as possible. And it is something that I had to figure out because, again, I was going really just based on diagrams here. So for this row, we're doing three regular double crochets. Okay. And then we do our chain one and we're going to skip a double crochet here and do two more double crochets. Okay, so this is the beginning of the new ridge here. And so for row eight, we chain up three, turn our work, do a double crochet into that second double crochet because the chain three counts as one. And then we chain one and we skip that chain space and we go into the next double crochet with a double crochet naturally. And we traverse back along until we only have four double crochets left. So that's one, two, and three. So it's a total of five. All right, so we have four double crochets left at the end here. So we are going to do our increasing of two double crochets, then one double crochet, and then two double crochets, and then finish by doing one double crochet. Yes. Alrighty. And that <clears throat> was the end of row eight. Now, I only say the numbers of the rows to try to make it easier to gauge your progress, but you know what? You really don't need to know what row number it is ultimately, and I'll explain why, because you can quite simply look and see where you're at. You know, this itself was one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, we've already done two because it's a six row repeat in essence, uh, six rows per segment. So it's always on the sixth row of the segment where you're going to be filling in that chain space with one, and you're just going all the way across, keeping in mind, of course, to still do your increases, but, you know, this top edge here, you know, is the only real difference. Um, so from here on in, you know, I don't really think it's necessary to say, oh, this is row number, blah, 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 because it's just about the repeat, really. All right, so we are going to go on to the next one. All righty. All righty. So for the next row, we chain up three. We turn our work. And yes, we're going to be doing our increasing. So that's two double crochets, followed by a single double crochet, two double crochets, single, double, single, double. And then we work our way across until we reach that chain space. And this is a very, very simple and quick project to make up. I rather like it. And I think it took me a... <coughs> Ooh, 
Pardon moi. Mm. Excuse me. I think it took me about a weekend uh, to get through. All right, so we did our uh, double crochet. We do a chain one for the chain one space, and then we finish by two double crochets, you know, just one in each for the very end. Ta-da! Alrighty, and then we chain up three, we turn our work, we do a double crochet into the second double crochet stitch, we do a chain one, and we skip over the chain one space, and we go into that first double crochet stitch. See how it's taking shape here? So we've got four. We need, it's a total of five whole spaces, and then we do that sixth final row. So working our way back along this edge. Oops, I lost my loop. All right, and then we proceed backwards until we only have four stitches remaining so that we can do our increase. Oh, it's changing color already. That's why I love the Karen cakes, you know me. I'm silly, but acceptably silly, I think. Alrighty, so yes, we have our four stitches remaining. So we do two double crochets, then one double crochet, then two double crochets, and then finish with one double crochet. Ta-da! Alrighty, and then we chain three, turn the work into that second double crochet. We do two double crochets because you always start and finish with your increase. So that's two double crochets, one double crochet, and then two double crochets. Now, nice and easy. All right, and then we work our way across until we hit our chain one space. Alrighty, almost there. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Need some more yarn. Sorry. Alrighty, getting there, getting there. Yeah, so it's like with every row that you do, you're increasing, so of course it's just going to get wider and wider and wider. And so I find that this does make a rather nice and quick shawl pattern. All right, so we reach the chain space. So we do a chain one and we finish with two double crochets, one in each. And also this is a great one because once you have the general understanding of how the pattern works, you really don't need to think terribly much about it because you can just look at the pattern and see where you're at. See right now I have one, two, three, four, and five whole spaces there. So now we know because this this is the uh, five rows finished of this segment, the sixth row, well what do we do? We chain up three, one, two, and three, turn the work, do a double crochet into that second double crochet stitch. Yes. Then we do a double crochet into that chain space there. 
and work our way across until uh, we have just four stitches remaining so that we can end on our increase and that will be the end of the second segment. All right, working our way back. Do do do. And I'm not going to do the entire shawl with you because it's it's really just these, you know, uh, six rows over and over and over and over uh, for as many segments as you want. Um, all right, so we've got one, two, three, four. All right, so I just need one more. All right, so we've got our four stitches there. So we do two double crochets into the fourth from the end, and then one, and then two double crochets. And then we finish with one Come on, work with me here. There we go. And then we end with one double crochet. All right, and we're gonna go on to our third segment. So you can see how, let me just get that out of the way, sorry. You can see how this edge down here, it does have a bit of a curvature to it, okay? And we have this edge, you know, it's gonna be a little spiky, um, but spiky, snuggly, nice spiky, not spiky, dangerous spiky. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go on to the next segment and I'm gonna show you how to uh, figure out just where it is that you need to go along and you have to stop because each of these segments as you keep going is going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger with more and more stitches between when you start and where you have to determine oh I need to end and I need to uh, you know finish off because um, that's well that's how this pattern works <laughs> and I will explain that too already Alrighty, so to do our third segment, we start, of course, by chaining up three. And then we do our increase. So in the second double crochet, we do two double crochets. Come, come now. Two double crochets, then one double crochet and two double crochets. Okay, then we're going to work our way across. And we're not gonna go all the way to the end, of course, because this needs to be a new uh, scale wing segment, you know, so we're going to work our way across, and so we have this stitch right here, okay, that goes into that chain space. Then we have three regular double crochets. This next one, that is where we end, okay? So we're going to proceed right along. And it may sound a little convoluted and weird, I understand, but I hope that don't make sense because, all right, so the thing is, is that if we need to skip these three and we need to end here, 
okay? So then that means this stitch and this stitch, okay, are, um, you know, the, the endings, you know, this one is where the, um, you know, the, the chain space is, right? Make sense? Okay, so if this is where the chain space is, that is where we have to initially stop, okay? So it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Six from the chain space post filler there, okay? So when you have six, that's when you stop, okay? So I just need to do two more. And that way you don't actually need a written pattern. Just understand where you, where it is that you need to, you know, where you need to put on the brakes. So I chained one, and then I'm skipping one. And then I do a double crochet, followed by a, another double crochet. And then, as you can see, I've got three double crochets, and then there's that one. So this is the beginning of the new the new scale segment, okay? And that is what you're going to be doing, you know, every time you start a new uh, segment that, you know, after you do that sixth row, uh, you have to backtrack from the end here. And so you count this one so that's that's your your dead filler and then one two three four five and six and that way you know not where you stop stop but where you initially stop on the sixth because you need that chain space okay I'm really hoping that this makes sense to you um, and I hope that I am not too long-winded um, so you chain up three, and you do a solitary double crochet, chain one, skip the chain space, double crochet all the way back until there are only four stitches remaining. You know, now, I've been, I, I totally read the comments, and I love to hear what you guys have to say. I've gotten a rather delightful plethora of really positive feedback and comments, and uh, one, two, three, four. I'm absolutely delighted. You know, some of you really appreciate the time and the effort that goes into making these videos. Um, some people think that I'm too slow. Well, you know, the question is, would I rather be slow and thorough or quick and confusing? Uh, you know, I, I, I really do want to keep your attention and, uh, you know, keeping, you know, you guys engaged. So we reached our last four here. So it's two double crochets. And one double crochet and two double crochets and end with one double crochet. All right. And then we chain up three, two, three. And we work our way back, starting with our increase. In the second double crochet, we do two double crochets. And then one double crochet. And then two double crochets. And quite simply, you just work your way back along this edge. And, you know, you can, you know, conceivably do as many of these scales as you want to. Um, you know, everybody is a different size. And 
whenever there is a pattern that says one size fits all, well, we are not all made from some sort of assembly line. That is why I like patterns in particular where there is some wiggle room as far as you can make it as big or as small as you like. Now, we are all like snowflakes, all individual. Alrighty. And so we're almost at our chain space. <coughs> Pardon me. And so I did a, a chain one there. And then we skip over that chain space and we do a double crochet and double crochet into the very end. E. Okay. And so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to cease and desist. <laughs> I am going to uh, stop the video here and I'm going to finish up segment three and I'm going to show you how to do the finishing edge that I came up with. Okay. So I will be back in a bit. Okie dokie pokey. So <clears throat> I continued along and as you can see, yes, it has a definite arching nature to it. And as far as the scales are concerned, you know, I, I just, I love how this looks, of course, otherwise I wouldn't do it. So now this is of course only the third scale and I already did my five rows. One, two, three, four, five. Now for the finished piece that I did, I did a total of 12 scales, okay? And on the 12th scale, I decided to do a bit of an interesting yet exceedingly simple edging. Um, so on picture that this here, is my 12th scale, right? I already did five rows, okay? Now on the final, AKA sixth row of the segment, we are going to finish by chaining up three, turning the work, okay? And then doing a double crochet, just like always, into that second double crochet stitch, nothing new there, do a chain one and do a double crochet into that stitch. Straightforward, right? Then we do another chain one and we skip a double crochet, go into the next. Chain one, skip a double crochet, go into the next, and really just go in this fashion the whole way along. And I know it's not frilly, it's not, uh, you know, with shells and whatnot, you know, it's just, it's very, very simple, but the design of the pattern itself is very simple uh, with eyelet rows along each of the scales. So I thought, finish up with, you know, sort of uh, eyelet rows. You know, just nice, nice and simple. It looks very clean to me. Okay, and of course, naturally, you can do whatever it is that you like as far as edging is concerned, but I like to go for simplicity. You know, when simplicity works, yeah, go for it. You know, I think it, you know, brings a, a level of uniformity to the piece. And so you just keep going across until you hit the end. And there you are. Now, of course, as I've said, you can use as many of these skeins as you want to make as many of these scales as you want. Um, you know, go for it. Uh, you know, if you want a more substantial shawl than the one that I've created, um, you know, from the, the pattern that I found. So listen, I hope you guys give this a try because it's really quick, it's really easy, a lot of fun, and, you know, I think it's rather unique. 
So, well, just like you guys. <laughs> so listen, please keep your comments coming. I love hearing from you. And, um, you know, uh, I am totally open to suggestions. If I can, I'd be more than happy to accommodate you. Um, and uh, until next time, keep caffeinated, keep inspired, and keep stitching. Ta-ta for now, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye now.